I am so very proud of you, but I'm proud because you silenced the critics. I don't believe, and you've said this before, that you feel like you've been respected for what you've done for the game. Was that your seal of approval? Was that your, your I told y'all? Was that your, I got nothing else to say. That's my legacy. I'm the shit. <laughs> Honestly, um... I stopped caring with what everybody was saying, but I, I say that in two ways. I say that in like their, that, that fueled me like every, mm -hmm. you know, some people would say the lack of respect, respect, I think fueled me to like get up on a random Sunday and go mm -hmm. work out. Um, but honestly, selfishly, I, I did that for myself. Like I went home for myself and I think this choice there were a number of people that that called me afterwards after I made my decision to go home and they said I'm so happy you made a decision for you and you didn't think about anybody else but yourself and I think that that's kind of what this championship was it was like we did this for us you know and the whole city represented family and friends represented but we did it for us and so I guess it was one of those things where it was like take it as you will take it as you take it um but we did this for us you say lack of respect outlets coaches people in the game who disrespected you in your opinion without naming names or you can name names um you know i think everybody goes through their career and you know there's people that don't necessarily like certain people and you know there's people i don't like <laughs> you know uh, but I just think when we're talking about the game of basketball and we're looking at different situations, like it, player fits, I just felt like I needed a new breath to see if it was me. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes you're, you're kind of like, you're in a situation for so long and it works and then sometimes it doesn't and whatever. And it's like, sometimes you just need to see if it was you, you know? And like I said, the story is still being written, but I think it just was one of those things where it's like, I needed a change. And I don't think I was the same person that I was going to Chicago that I was all the years in LA for sure. Um, what was different about you? I think I learned from the, the bumps and bruises and nicks that I took. And I think here's the thing that I learned the most, the disrespect. Cause you asked like who, and you know, all that stuff. I think I was comparing myself to others, you know, I was comparing myself to others. Like they respect this player or uh -huh. they respect that player. And if I would do that, then, and when I got to Chicago, it was like, screw it. You know, like I could care less, um, who respects, who disrespects, whatever. Because at the end of the day, it's like, when you win, you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. When you lose, you're, you're worse than everything. Sure. And so I, I don't think I pay any more attention to all the love that I'm getting. I mean, obviously there are certain people, you, Brandy, Christine, I mean, like my inner circle, my people, my family, my friends that have always been with me through the losses. So all these people that are on the bandwagon well, now that like, like she's this great leader. <laughs> and it's like, here's something. Yeah. Just as much as your opinion didn't matter before, it doesn't matter anymore. Here's something I think is interesting. I've always thought of you when you say people may not like you this is real this is a very honest story from first somebody in, in the media i've never heard anybody say anything bad about you maybe because i'm so um braggadocious and i have something i'm always saying something amazing about you so maybe they're like well let me not say it you know but i've never heard anyone say anything bad about you i know there has been there have been slights there have been missteps there have been opportunities that you weren't given when you deserve them clearly deserve them um, and there may have been political opportunities that you just didn't get because somebody said, I don't like her today. But I remember being at your house one time, you talk about comparing yourself. The reason why I never, ever, ever 
thought you compared yourself because you carry yourself so differently. Like, let me just do the game. Let me just do what I do. You're so politically correct in my mind, in my mind, right? You're not going to pop off on somebody like I would in my inappropriate way. Christine is appropriate, but I, I'm queen of a confrontation, you know, which makes me not necessarily the friendliest. And I am aware. <laughs> I'm, I embrace it. I, love you, I embrace it. It's so and mysterious. I know it. But I said something about another player and I was like, and it may have sounded like I was giving her props, but I really was. And I was like, oh, I could see why she went, but I never thought she was greater than you. You know who I'm talking about. Remember at your house when we were eating the Chipotle with the Mexican food? Yeah. We went to Chipotle. Yeah. Give me a, give me a deal, Chipotle. Uh, but I mentioned something about her because I just covered an award show and I was just like, and I never thought she was greater than you. I saw why she won, but I never thought she was greater than you. So I wonder if that was one of the comparisons, because I do hear people talk about how great certain other players are. And when they mention the great, sometimes you're not in that conversation for WNBA. And I wonder, like, hey, hold on. Well, why is that? That's disrespectful. You know, that's the, that might be what you might be referring to, correct? Yes. But also, I don't think I fit into... Um, the box, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like you say I'm politically correct and I'm not confrontational, but like maybe with the media, but within an organization, right. I think I'm a lot. Cause I'm always the one that like asks the question cause I don't know. And then sometimes people don't know the answer to the question I'm asking. And then right. it gets like, while well, you're trying to show me up and it's like, no, I really was just asking a question <laughs> to try to get more information. So I feel as though within the game of basketball, I'm the person that has always questioned why things are the way they are. Why, if I'm 6'4", do I have to go stand by the basket and shoot hooks? <laughs> like, I, I think it's worked out in my favor for a lot of things, but it also didn't work out in my favor. And so I think now we're at like that perfect storm where the world is ready for outspoken yeah. people. Like the world is encouraging like people to stand yeah. up for and be like, no, that's not yeah. right. But like a couple years ago, four or five years ago, I wasn't allowed to dribble up the court. Like I had to convince my coaches like I could dribble <laughs> and I could pass, you know? So it's like, it's kind of like my personality is. I get it. Welcome now, similar to how seven footers now are like, yeah, shoot it. Like step up beyond the arc yeah. and shoot it. And I think that's kind of how it is with my personality is, you know, I think it wasn't tolerated well by different people. Um and therefore, it kind of like trickled down into the way things are in basketball. I understand. I live that life daily. You you know, <laughs> Jamel, she, she's very much politically correct in the office, but she'll F you up on social media, right? Oh, okay. Because I was like, wait in a second. Office, Hold on. No. She's a doll to work with, right? Honestly, it's just what she says on Twitter. You'd be like, oh, oh, oh okay. Or on social media, oh, okay. While I am you, I'm like, hold on, I got a question. And then people are rolling their eyes mm -hmm. or I'm like, that ain't fair. I'm queen to point out what's not fair. So I overstand what you're saying. There was a moment uh, before you left the Sparks. Let's go to the playoffs. And I was like, she better than me. I won't get into the, we don't have to he say, she say, but we can. So you get benched by Fisher, you feel away, you see it on your face, you're irritated, and you sit down and you were like, quiet. I, I felt like you were calling people names, perhaps people could have been dead, murdered, and by people I mean him, and everybody was letting him have it on social media, not just the recent championship, but even then, we're just like, what is he doing? What's going on here? Who? And he's, you know, I'll say it, you don't have to, it's not loved. And I was like, I love her for respecting this man in this moment. I wouldn't have done it. My ego could not have handled that. How were you able in that moment to handle him removing you from the game? Or am I, am I reading that wrong? Was that not how that worked? No, you're, you're not reading that wrong. Um, my facial expressions are my <laughs> real talk. Everybody that knows me knows that I'm a woman of... 50 million a memeable face as my daughter says <laughs> you know in that moment I will say I think that there was tremendous growth in who I am um I think I read somewhere it was even on the internet like calm is a superpower and I really truly honestly believe that and I think in that moment that like 
zen was tested. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm also a person of like, once I process the situation, I go back and I ask myself how I can be better. Like, what could I have done to prevent this from happening? I did the same thing with USA basketball. Like, it shouldn't have ever been a question. Like, what could I have done? And I think in that moment, we had an up and down season, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, I don't think I came in in as great a shape as I should have. Now, people would say, well, you should have that luxury to be able to play your way or play through injuries and whatever. But honestly, looking back in March, I was overweight eating with Chuck. Like uh, drinking with Chuck, eating with Chuck. Chuck. Like he's yeah, such ba- he's a bad influence. Mr. Barkley's a bad Early influence. influence. He is the worst. And he caught I blame him for me being benched. <laughs> but you know, at the same time, I think I looked and pointed at myself and I said, it took me a long time to reach out to Fish and be able to talk to him, to be honest with you. It took me a long time. And that was the bubble season the next year. But I said, I'll be damned if I'm gonna be out of shape. I'm gonna be the best shape that I can be in. I'm going to get up and work out extra. You know, I I ended up trimming 10 pounds to be more lean so that my knees could carry stuff. I really looked at it as like, I'm not going to quit. Like, I don't want to demand a trade. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Like that's, this is, this is like, this is my car. Like the sparks were, were something that I spent a long time For building. Sure. Like personally, yeah. like me and NECA had been there the longest, we were the longest tenured sparks. And I was like, I felt ownership for this. So I felt like, yeah, it was disrespectful, but I did have a hand in something. Like, I can't blame all of it. Do I think that it was right? No. Do I think it should have happened? Hell no. But I really used that and fueled myself to go into 2020, you know, to dominate. And I think I did in the bubble.